Oh, hi, what are your hobbies? My hobbies include leisurely strolls through grocery stores. Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another day of Vlogmas 2019. Today's Monday, December 9th and it is currently four o'clock in the morning. I got up at three this morning because I am traveling to uh, Charleston, South Carolina today for a work conference. I'm leaving this morning and coming back Thursday, which is not my first choice because we just got back from Cancun late Friday evening. So it has been a busy weekend trying to get ready for my trip, but I think I'm ready. I'm having some Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> I actually need to leave within the next like five or 10 minutes. So I'm gonna get out the door and then I'll catch up with you at the airport. Let me show you what I packed the kids for lunch this morning really quick before I'm leaving. So nothing fancy, they just have a Capri Sun, a, uh, this is actually roasted chicken from the deli at Walmart, sandwich with cheese, their ice packs down there, grapes and oatmeal cream pie, and these pop chips because that's what I had time for this morning. Okay, I'll catch you in a little bit. So here's a funny story. It's super foggy out this morning and I totally missed my exit. <laughs> like I'm at the Cedar Rapids airport and I don't really fly out of here very often um, just because it's like an hour from my house whereas like Moline is half hour. Um, anyway, but I had to fly out of here because I could not get a flight from Moline to Charleston without having two layovers. So I would have had to fly from Moline to O'Hare, O'Hare to Denver, Denver to Charleston. How stupid is that? So I had to fly out of Cedar Rapids. But anyway, I was like jamming out to Pink Floyd and uh, totally missed my exit. <laughs> anyway, it's dark and it's misting and it's very foggy and I'm gonna go get checked in for my flight. In case you were wondering about the food selection at small airports, it sucks. So. You know what I had for breakfast is Diet Mountain Dew and some cheese curds and a small bag of beef jerky. I really just wanted a breakfast sandwich, but you know, I had to <laughs> settle for this. Anyway, my uh, flight is starting to board now, so I'll wow. see you in Chicago. My hair is crazy. So I need to make it to B6, uh, which is over in a different concourse, and I have like five minutes to do it, so see if I can make it. All right, so I made it to my gate. Uh, I even had time to stop and grab a wrap that I can eat for lunch on the plane. This is a veggie. Greek wrap with a side of hummus and I grabbed some water too. So I just made it to the hotel. It's about quarter after one local time. So um, I got to the airport at like, what time was it? 12.30, I think. So even though the flight was delayed a little bit, we still actually got in on time. Actually, I think it was like 10 minutes early. So I just checked into my room. Um, I actually have the Marriott app because I do like the rewards points and all that. And I actually was able to check in on my phone and use my phone as my room key like via Bluetooth, so I didn't even have to go into the front desk. That was awesome. My only complaint is that it's hot in here. Um, I have the, like I have the air conditioner on allegedly, but it says it's 74 in here and I keep turning it down and it's not doing anything. So if it still stays hot, I'm gonna probably request a different room just because I'm not trying to be nitpicky or anything, but if I'm gonna be here for three days, you know, four days and the AC's not working, that's really gonna irritate me. Also, it feels like summer here. <laughs> like, like when I left this morning, it was like in the 30s. And now here it's like, what'd they say? Like 60s or something like that? So anyway, 
I don't know. I don't feel like I could ever live in a place like this year round where it never gets cold. Because there's just like no reprieve um, from warmth. And I can't, I feel like I can't do that. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to pull my laptop out and work on some things. Um, I just saw actually that there is a Publix over here. I don't think I've ever been to a Publix before. But it's just like right across the street here. Which is good because usually if I'm going to be somewhere for a week, um, I like to like go and get like, you know, some soda and maybe some cheese sticks and crackers. I don't know, just like stuff to keep in my room, maybe stuff for breakfast so I don't have to worry about eating at the hotel. So I don't know, I might do that later. Hallelujah. I can feel the cold air coming out of here. Oh, thank God. All right, so it's a little bit after three and um, I have a meeting that starts at 3.30 and then my presentation that I'm doing today is from 4.30 to 5.30. I don't know if it'll take that whole hour, but on the plane, I basically went through um, our PowerPoint. I'm co-presenting with another couple people. So let me just show you guys kind of how I do this. I don't know if this is interesting to anyone, but <laughs> If I'm gonna speak on something, then I usually like to print out the slides, read through it ahead of time, and then just kind of talk about what I'm going to, um, not talk about, but like write down on the slides what I want to say, because I don't just wanna like read the slides off to the audience. And I prefer to have, like if I'm facing the audience and they're looking at the projector, then I wanna have the slides, or I wanna have the printout in front of me so that I can like glance down in it and, and talk to them. So. We are doing a one hour presentation on um, process improvement on the sustainment phase. So once you have you know, made the improvement, how do you sustain that improvement? And this is in regards to healthcare. I don't, I, people get tired of me saying this, but I know I have <laughs> new people watching all the time. So I'm a nurse by trade, but I work in quality improvement. And so a lot of times when I'm traveling, I am doing um, either like faculty or coaching for uh, teams that are doing process improvement projects. So just a second. Okay, so this is like a multi-slide uh, presentation, but I am responsible for flat, for slides six through 10. So um, three signs of a reliable process. Uh, decision aids and reminders are built into the system. The desired action is the default and redundant processes are utilized. And since I'm not just gonna read off all those things, I sort of have some notes written here, like what are like practical examples of these, that's kind of something I'm big on when I do presentations is not just like teaching the concepts, but like really pulling that back to healthcare and how does that, um, or how, how can we teach that in terms of what we do to take care of patients every day. Uh, and then the next slide is on why is improvement not sustained? So common reasons why there is process entropy or why a uh, a project is not successful in the long term. So like I have wrote a note up here, like I'm not going to read all these, just highlight a couple. Um, I'm gonna talk about leadership reasons. So inattention to monitoring and measuring the capability of a new process. Um, talking about policies. So, you know, you can write new policies all day, but it doesn't automatically change the process. You know, policies can help to enforce uh, a process and make sure that it's done, but it doesn't always help if no one is aware of it. Um, and then human factors reasons, so environmental conditions and task design. So just talking about if you redesign a process and it's more difficult for the staff, sustainment will not happen. You know, what if, what if a process is hard, then the staff will find workarounds. Um, and then process design, is the process dependent on a particular person, space, or piece of equipment? So one way to fail miserably in process improvement is making a process dependent on one person because then if that person leaves or they're on vacation or you know whatever the case may be uh, the whole improvement project will fall apart okay and then the next slide is on the four principles of sustainment so be clear on what is being sustained be clear on who owns the responsibility so the important part of this is that you know you should have one point person for the project like a project leader or a contact but that entire process should not just depend on one person that's really not what ownership means in process improvement um, and then there are the four principles so uh, make sure that the right way is the easy way the right way is standard, detailed, and clear. Be iterative. So essentially what that means is that the process will improve with time as it's repeated over and over. 
um, and then measure the process. So don't focus on your outcomes goal, but get feedback from staff. Like how is the change going? Is it easy? Is it um, something that we can sustain for the long term? And then this is just like a graphical representation of sustainment. So this is just an example of uh, ventilator bundle compliance um, in a hospital. I don't know where this came from or if it's just like a, um, you know, made up to demonstrate this point. But essentially what you're looking at here is this is the level of compliance with your ventilator bundle. And these are the interventions that were done during the project. So you can see that we improved, improved, improved. And then this is really the sustainment piece. And then like what happened here so that we, um, you know, dropped down in compliance and then went back up. So really just enforcing that you need to keep track of your interventions and what date that you do them. Um, so that then you can demonstrate like to leadership or whoever and say, you know, this is a process that we improved and not only did we improve it, but we were able to sustain it. Okay. And then this is the last slide. So what, you know, project are we sustaining? Um, so are we looking at outcomes? Are we looking at processes, skills, or attitudes and perceptions? And then I just have some different examples of improvement projects here that fit those. So one from San Diego, one from Albany, one from Cleveland, and one from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Um, and so that is really the end of the slides that I am going to present. So I hope that you didn't find that too <laughs> dull and boring, but um, some people ask me a lot, like, what do you do? What, you know, and it's, sometimes I feel like it's kind of hard to explain. Um, but I love like teaching and talking and like coaching people through this kind of stuff. I just think that it's super gratifying. And obviously in the end, we're trying to improve care for patients. Um, and so it was something that I'm super passionate about and I love getting up in front of people and talking. I know that some people are like really fearful of that and public speaking and everything, but that's something that I really like to do, especially if it's a topic that I know a lot about and that I'm passionate about. So anyway, I'm gonna finish getting ready. Um, I'll show you guys what I'm wearing just for the meeting and the presentation today. And I think what I'm going to do tonight is probably just stay in my room because I got up so early this morning. So what I'm probably going to do after we're done today is walk over to Publix and see what I can find for um, dinner. I might just see if, I don't know, they probably have like sushi or something. I don't know. So anyway, I'll walk over there and see what they have. Or I can do Uber Eats also, but I'm not going out tonight. Also, uh, if you're watching this, you'll be watching it on um, Tuesday, December 10th, because I'm going to edit it tonight after I get done working. So if you live in the Charleston area and you're interested in going out for a meetup on Wednesday night. I was just trying to gauge interest in that for dinner and see if anyone's interested, if anyone lives around this area. So if that is you, then um, you can either, the comments are a bad spot to leave stuff because sometimes those get missed, but um, you can uh, direct message me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is just Jen Chapin and um, I'll be checking that throughout the day and hopefully we can get a small group of people together for dinner while I'm here. All right, so here's what I ended up with. So I just have this tank top on. This is from Old Navy. I got it many years ago. Um, a black blazer and then these capris from Loft. And then these are like Dansko Mary Janes. So I didn't even like properly do my makeup. So, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go downstairs now. Okay, so presentation's done. It went really well. I am just walking over to Publix. It's about 5.35. It was literally like a two minute walk over here. So that's super awesome. Oh, hi, what are your hobbies? My hobbies include leisurely strolls through grocery stores when I'm in town away from home because, you know, I'm in a red light. <laughs> so I'm back from Publix. I have to say, I have never posted a grocery haul from a hotel room before, but you know, there's first time for everything. So, <laughs> so here we go. Uh, I'll start down here. So, um, well, let me just uh, preface this by saying my goal was basically to buy everything that I needed for breakfast and lunches this week for three days. So, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, because a lot of times we'll only get like one hour for lunch during the conference. And it's nice to just have something in my room here that I can run up and grab rather than having to order something in. 
um, you know, different things like that. So uh, I did get some smoked turkey breast. This brand is Greenwise. Again, I've never been to Publix before, so I uh, it, was, it was interesting. I think it reminds me of a high V, basically. Um, and then I also got some Vermont white cheddar cheese to go with that. And I'll probably just roll those up together or I will put them on these little flatbread crackers that I got. So I grabbed a box of these. I don't think I've ever had these before. And then for lunch tomorrow, I grabbed a salmon salad. This looked really good. It looks like it has spring mix and capers, tomatoes, some vinaigrette, eggs, and cucumber. For dinner tonight, I got myself some sushi. So it says this is a chef's sampler. Looks good. Um, and then I also grabbed some hummus to have either with lunches or like in the evening if I need a snack. And to go with the hummus, I figured I would use these crackers and this uh, these little bags of snack-sized carrots that I grabbed. Uh, I got a Godiva dark chocolate ganache just for a little treat. Um, and then for breakfast, I got a couple of these Del Monte red grapefruit. I really love these. I used to buy them in the huge packs at Costco. I probably should do that again. They're really good. They're kind of pricey, but they're good. Um, and then I did pack some granola in my carry-on bag just for snacking. And so I figured for breakfast, too, I could do some yogurt with granola. So I got three of the Noosa, one lemon, one key lime, and one mixed berry. And then I did grab a Diet Mountain Dew for tomorrow morning and some silverware, plastic silverware, because I didn't want to get back here to the room and find out that I didn't have anything to eat my food with. Also... Have you guys watched Dirty John on Netflix? I didn't even know it was on Netflix. I just randomly saw it this morning while I was getting ready to leave for the airport because I wanted something to download to watch on the plane. And they have it on Netflix. I first actually listened to it um, on a podcast. So if you know what I'm talking about, let me know. But I think it was like on Showtime or I don't know what channel it was on, but now it's on Netflix. Anyway, even if you haven't listened to the podcast, I would totally recommend it. It's a really good series. I watched four episodes while I was en route today. Um, in my flights and then um, I'm working on the fifth one right now while I eat my dinner. All right, so I wanted to catch up with you guys because I didn't give you an update on uh, the presentation that I gave earlier. I'm gonna tell you what time it is. It is 7.30. Um, so it actually went really well. I was actually co-presenting with two other um, people who are my colleagues, I guess you would say. And I always get nervous before presentations um, in front of like, uh, I don't want to say I get nervous because like I know what I'm talking about and I know how to explain it and I'm confident in what I'm saying. But at the same time, when it's not with people from like my hospital, sometimes I get nervous and that's just what happens. But, um, I think it went well. I really did use the notes that I showed you guys on my PowerPoint earlier. So that was helpful. And um, we had a good discussion. There was good like Q&A afterwards, which that is what I always feel like is the most important part of a presentation is like if I or like myself and someone else is giving a presentation on something is like, is there a good like robust Q&A afterwards? That means that people were listening, they were taking it in and they have questions on what was presented. And so overall, I feel like it went really well. Um, so I'm excited for the uh, rest of the sessions, I am not presenting formally um, anymore during these sessions, but I do have a team that I am helping to coach to improvement projects. And so I will be like, you know, facilitating some discussions and things like that, but not anything of a formal presentation. So another thing I wanted to say is that <laughs> I posted yesterday's vlog this afternoon. I had um, edited it, that's a hard thing to say, edited it this morning um, while I was at the airport and while I was on the plane. And then as soon as I got to the hotel today, I set it to upload and I posted it tonight. And I, I don't know. Um, I feel like, so if you didn't watch yesterday's video yet, you have to go back and watch it. I basically posted a vlog about how I went to a town hall. Um, for a political candidate and I felt like I did a pretty good job of objectively talking about it in the video but obviously some people are going to be offended and um, I guess if people continue to like fight back and forth in the comments I'm just going to have to turn off comments for that video 
but I'm also not gonna apologize for what I posted because I'm sharing my day. That's the whole point of Vlogmas, right? It's like, hey, I'm vlogging, I'm showing you what I'm doing during the day. I try to show it in an objective manner. I'm not intending on offending anyone, and if people are offended that uh, I have different views than them, I feel like that's a little immature. Like. We all know and love people that have different political views than us. Like literally half of my family, half of my coworkers, half of my close friends have different political views than I do. Does that mean I stop liking them and stop talking to them? No, like I, like, I appreciate that. Um, I think that that is what makes America awesome is that we all have differing views and we get to discuss those and hopefully we can do that in a uh, cordial and friendly manner <laughs> and so I was talking to Adam about it on the phone tonight and I was just like you know I don't know if I'm gonna have to um, start like heavily moderating the comments if I mean I don't know you'll just have to go look at the comments like I've been hearting like every comment, even if they're like contrary to what I think. I'm just like, love, love, love. The only couple comments that I have deleted is someone said go to hell or something like that. And I was like, nope. <laughs> and then some people have said that they're unsubscribing from my channel because they're like speculating on my political views or whatever. And to that, I would say, I'm sorry that you feel that way. Um, you know, I, the whole, <laughs> The whole point of Vlogmas is to like share my life and I'm not sharing, like I'm not trying to persuade anyone to like think a certain thing or believe a certain thing. I'm just like, I'm literally like sharing my day with you. So I'm sorry if that's offensive, but um, I, you know, this, I don't necessarily have to, I, what am I trying to say? I'm not in a position where I have to be like super worried about what I'm posting because this isn't my primary job. Like this is a side hustle for me and I do it because I love it and I love sharing and I love interacting with you guys in the comments except when they tell me to go to hell, I don't like that. <laughs> Someone actually called me, what did they say yesterday? You clever cow. I was intrigued by that comment because I was like, are you like praising me or are you dissing me? Like you're calling me clever, but you're also calling me a cow. I don't really understand. <laughs> like some of the comments I get are just like, and actually I didn't even delete the comment. Like I actually went in to respond to it. Like I have YouTube studio on my phone or whatever. And I went in to like respond to it and I was like, did you just call me a clever cow? Like, I don't know whether to feel offended or like laugh at that. Um, and then it got filtered out. Like, here's the thing is like, sometimes people don't understand about YouTube is that like, some of the comments, like, if there are certain like terms in there, like beyond what I dictate, like, for my channel, I have certain things blocked. Like I have certain terms blocked. So like, overweight, fat, whatever. I have a lot of those terms blocked because if you're just gonna comment on my video that I'm fat or my kids are overweight or they're fat, like, I don't, like, I'm not gonna deal with that. Um, so I just don't even wanna see it. And so I have those things like filtered out so you can filter out keywords, but like clever cow, I don't have that filtered out. <laughs> and so like, I, I literally tried to like check on it and um, I replied and then when I went back to like re-reply, it was gone. <laughs> And so anyway, if you call me a clever cow, please comment again. I would love to discuss that with you. Anyway, I think I wanted, what I wanted to say is that like, overall the comments were like very positive. And like, I'm just saying like, if I were an outsider looking in, and if I were watching someone's Vlogmas, like if I, here's my stance. If I'm really invested in a YouTuber and I like watching their channel, I like watching their daily vlogs. Like even if they have like a different perspective than me, like maybe they go to church. I don't go to church. Maybe they support a different political party than I do. I don't support that political party. Like I'm not gonna discriminate against people that I like because they have different beliefs than me. And so I would always be interested in watching their vlogs. Like the thing I'm seeing like this vlogmas is that, um, like a lot of the YouTubers I watch aren't really posting vlogs. They're posting like hauls and recipes and like 
that's totally fine like if that's what you have to post but I had some comments that people actually wanted me to post vlogs and I don't really vlog like a whole lot like I post a lot of like meal prep and like really like structured videos and so I did think it would be fun to like truly vlog this month um, and I know it's a challenge to post a vlog every day and I'm not saying that I'm gonna post a proper vlog like every single day but I'm gonna try my best to do whatever I can to do that some of them might be recipe videos or whatever um, but I have been watching if you guys know Jen Ross she uh, her channel is pretty neat living and she's had like several different YouTube channels in the past like organized like Jen and different th you guys probably already know her she's a much bigger youtuber than I are but um, anyway, I met her uh, earlier this year in Eugene at Story Camp, and I have actually been going back and re-watching a lot of her, she didn't call it Vlogmas, she called it Vlogadays, and so I've been going back and watching a lot of her vlogs from like six, seven years ago, and I've been obsessed with watching those recently, and Jen, I'm sure you're not watching my channel, but if you are, hi. <laughs> so... Um, that's what I've been watching and I just think they've been super interesting and so that's what I've trying to whoops that's what I've been trying to post is more actual like proper vlogs instead of like structured videos so the the moral of the story is is like I'm gonna post what I do every day this month and that's what I'm gonna do and even next weekend I might go and see another political candidate um, I have to look it up online and see if that person is near me. So, um, if that kind of stuff offends you, you know, I try to talk about it very like objectively and try not to offend anyone, but I'm just sharing what I do every day. That's what I'm doing. Connor's Christmas concert is tonight. So Kira's FaceTiming me. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm going to hold it so that it's uh, a little less bouncy than Kira. Okay. All right, so uh, Adam actually just, well, Kira, actually, because she has an iPhone, she just FaceTimed me. Connor's Christmas concert which I'm missing tonight and I feel terrible about it but um they were able to FaceTime me the whole concert so I just watched that not the whole concert but Connor's performing so anyway that's just one thing about like traveling for work is you know I don't I don't miss a lot of stuff but I do miss some stuff and so obviously the stuff that I do miss I'm sad about but um Anyway, Connor's class did really good, so I'm proud of him. I'll, I'll talk to him on the phone later. But to finish out this video, I wanted to do a uh, YouTube tag video. So this is the TMI tag video, and if you're not familiar with TMI, it's too much information. So I saw a couple videos on this, and I'll post all the questions down below in the description box. Um, and so anyway, I'm going to answer these right now, and... Uh, let me know what you think. The first question is, what are you currently wearing? So I'm currently wearing a shirt from Ray Gun. I will try to remember to link their site down below. And I am wearing, you guys can't see, but I'm wearing pajama pants um, from Walmart because that's how I roll in my hotel room at night. Have you ever been in love? Yes. Uh, obviously I'm in love with my husband, <laughs> but um, I do feel like I was in love in high school or like what I knew as love. Uh, I had like a serious boyfriend from like 15 to 16 or 17 and uh, I do feel like at that point in my life like I would say like I love you even though you know you're a teenager so who knows. Did you ever have a terrible breakup? Yes. <laughs> when my very first boyfriend broke up with me it was terrible I was like uh, so like despondent and depressed and not eating and I just remember listening to like very depressing Dixie Chicks songs for like hours on end but that was like in 1989 so you know uh, how old are you I am 36 years old how tall are you I am 5'8 how much do you weigh 
Uh, I weigh anywhere between 235 and 240 pounds. Most people that answer this tag don't answer that. I don't care. I'm very transparent about that's how much I weigh. I wear a size 18, 20, and um, I don't just feel like, you know, uh, YouTube is not just for skinny people. YouTube is for all people. Um, and so that's how much I weigh and how tall I am. Do you have any piercings? Yes. Uh, so I have my ears pierced. Um, I actually also had a second hole pierced at one point, but they grew back in. I had my cartilage pierced, um, and actually that grew a keloid and I had to have it removed surgically twice. I also used to have my, uh, eyebrow pierced when I was younger and my tongue pierced, but the eyebrow and the tongue have since grown in. So basically all I have pierced now is my ears. Do you have any tattoos? Yes, I have two tattoos. I have one on my back, which I can't really show you, um, but it's a four leaf clover and it has Jen in it. And I don't know why I got it because I was 18 and stupid. And I also have a Playboy Bunny tattoo, which I will attempt to show you. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there it is. Uh, that is the, uh, probably one of the stupidest decisions I've ever made, but I was 17 and I had a fake ID and they had those little stickers at the tanning salon that were Playboy bunnies. And I was like, Hey, why don't I get a tattoo of that? Because you know, you're 17 and your brain isn't fully formed yet and you have a fake ID. So now you know, uh, what is your favorite drink? Uh, I mean, so if we're talking like regular drinks, I would say like coffee. Uh, I really like Diet Pepsi, but I also drink a lot of water too. If we're talking about alcoholic drinks, I would say either beer or Prosecco are my two favorite alcoholic drinks. What's your favorite song? That is a terrible question and I will never answer that because I have like 15 or 20 or 50 favorite songs. Um, I have a lot of favorite songs and so I will never be able to pick just one. What is your zodiac sign? Uh, I'm born in August and so I am a Leo. Uh, what are the traits of a Leo? I'm gonna read this to you. Leos are often described as the most courageous. They're the people who are the most critical of situations. Uh, they are extremely romantic. They have an inflated ego. They are masters of their own lives. They are very dedicated to their family and friends. Um, they're influential. Leo people are always at the center of everything, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, I'm not really into like astrology and is that astrology? I don't know. Like zodiac signs and all that stuff. But most of the stuff I'm, I've read about being a Leo is pretty spot on for me. How long does it take you to shower? Um, I would say 10 minutes max, maybe 15 if I have to shave my legs. What's your favorite show? Uh, the office, <laughs> the American version of the office. I love it. I could watch it over and over again. Uh, the other shows that I love or the other show that I love is big bang theory. I could watch that over and over again. Also, what is something you really miss? Oh, well right now I really miss being in Cancun since we were just there last week for vacation. So that's what I really miss right now. Where do you go when you're sad? My bed. Uh, so I have gone through uh, depression several times in my life, most notably when I was uh, diagnosed with postpartum depression after Kira was born. She was in the NICU. It was a very rough experience. Um, and I just remember before I got treated, there were times that I would just be so overwhelmed with everyone and everything and I would just go to my bed. Even if it was like six o'clock at night, I would go to my bed, I would shut the lights off and I would lay under the covers. And I just remember Adam asking me like, are you okay? And like, I couldn't articulate that I was not okay. <laughs> and I was like, I just wanna be in bed right now. So usually when I'm really sad, that's what I wanna do is get in my bed. How long does it take you to get ready in the morning? Um, so I typically get up an hour before I have to leave the house. So like on a regular morning when I'm not traveling, uh, I have to leave at 5.45. So I would probably get up at either 4.45 or 5, depending on whether I have to wash my hair or not. Have you ever been in a physical fight? No, not really. What turns you on? Uh, a sense of humor. What turns you off? Um, I think, uh, and I'm just saying this as someone who got married when I was very young, I have not dated 
very many people at all. <laughs> I've dated like three people, maybe four people in my life, including my husband. Uh, what turns me off is people who are not willing to just be quiet and listen. Um, that is something that is very bothersome to me, like people that feel like they just can't like be silent and listen and they have to like interject. So I would say that. Quality you look for in a partner. Uh, I would say being reliable, being dependent, being funny, um, being responsible. Do you see a theme here? <laughs> That's what honestly like attracted me to Adam in the first place is that he was like, even for his age, like when we first met, I was like 17 and he was 19. 19. He seemed very like responsible, like he had his shit together. He knew like where he wanted to go in life and that was very like attractive to me. Um, just because like I feel like I didn't have a lot of stability when I was growing up having divorced parents and everything and so that's something that I really wanted to find in a partner. What's your favorite color? Oh, purple. I wish I had a picture of it but my very first car was purple. It was a purple Pontiac Grand Am 1989. It was purple. I wish I had a picture of it. Oh, I don't. Loud music or soft? loud favorite quote oh i'm gonna do some research i'll get back to you on this one so i had to research the quote and i knew it was a rolled doll quote um which i actually made a scrapbook page about this and if i can find it i'll insert a picture but i'm not promising anything because it's a very old scrapbook page that i made but it says and above all watch with glittering eyes the whole world around you because the greatest secrets are always hidden in the most unlikely places. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Roll doll. So that's my favorite quote. Um, I don't know why, it just like, it even gives me like tingles now just reading it to you guys. Favorite actor, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Who thinks he is hot and who would choose him as their celebrity husband and who remembers uh, a guy, a girl on a pizza place? Me. <laughs> Uh, the reason that you joined YouTube. So this is interesting. So actually I joined YouTube many, many years ago. I would say probably even like maybe four or five or six years ago. I don't know the exact date um, because I was in the scrapbooking industry. I worked for a long time as sort of like an independent contractor on design teams um, in the scrapbooking industry. And my first videos on YouTube were for that. And several years ago, after we moved, I had started watching more like cooking and home and like mom videos. And um, so I talked to Adam about it and I was like, I want, I really want to start like changing the direction of my YouTube and doing these kinds of videos. And so do you think I should make a new channel or should I stick with my old channel? And he's like, well, you already have like, at the time, I don't remember how many subscribers I had, like maybe like 2,000, 1,000 or 2,000, something like that. And he's like, just, you know, do a video explaining that you're changing direction in your YouTube channel and um, see what happens. And so that's what I ended up doing. I just changed my um, YouTube name to John Chapin. And I did a video saying that I was going to start posting more like working mom, food, home type content. And, um, yeah, now I have, how many subscribers do I have? Let's see, 78,554. Uh, so yeah, it's it's been like an amazing journey. <laughs> Honestly, it's been super fun. And uh, I just decided tonight that when I get to 100,000 subscribers, I'm gonna buy like a really nice, expensive bottle of champagne and Adam and I are gonna celebrate. I don't know what is fancy champagne. like. Dom Perignon, I don't know how much that is. I'm not willing to pay like $1,000 a bottle. I'm not gonna pay that. Like I'll pay $100 for a bottle for celebration purposes, not like on a regular basis. All right, next time. Do you have any fears? What are they? Um, so I would say my biggest fear is like something happening to my kids. Uh, that is what is most terrifying to me. Like. I can deal with spiders, bugs, mice, even snakes. I'm not a huge fan of snakes. But like something happening to my kids is probably one of the worst fears that I have. 
What's the last thing that made you cry? Oh, I actually don't know. I don't remember. Um, if I remembered, I would tell you, but I don't. Meaning behind your YouTube name, Jen Chapin. So here's a funny thing. My name is Jennifer Chapin. However, when I started working, uh, people started calling me Jen. Like for some reason, they just started calling me Jen. And I was, I never went by Jen like my whole entire life. Like Adam doesn't call me Jen. Uh, none of my family calls me Jen. They call me Jennifer. That's always what I went by. But for some reason, when I started working professionally and when I went online, I just started going by Jen Chapin. And so that's what I go by on my YouTube channel. And when I switch over my YouTube channel from like scrapbooking to more like home life stuff, I actually, like I had these conversations, like I actually asked Kira and Adam and I was like, should I try to come up with like a clever name about something? And in the end, I just thought, no, I'm not gonna like come up with some clever name and like box myself into like this neat little box. Like I'm not gonna be like keto this or mom this or whatever because I, I'm not gonna like commit to posting like one certain type of comment or comment content. I'm not gonna commit to posting one certain type of content. And so I'm just gonna use my name and that's what I did. Last time you said you love someone. Well, when Adam just got done FaceTiming me from the concert, I said I loved him. Last book you read. Uh, crap, what was that called? Uh, oh, The Family Upstairs. So it was on Book of the Month Club. If you guys have Book of the Month, Month Club, I'll link it down below. You should totally get it. Uh, I love it. It's like 15 bucks a month and you get a book. Like you get to pick your book every month. And so now I have a collection of books that are mine that I need to read, but I don't have time to. <laughs> so The Family Upstairs is by Lisa Jewell. Um, I would say like 3.5 out of 5 stars. Like it kept my interest. It was like a good beach read. Is it one of those books that I'm going to like remember and it impacts me forever? No, but it was a decent read. Last show you watched. Oh, I think I already talked about this. Dirty John on Netflix. Go watch it. Last place you were. Well, this week I'm in Charleston. Uh, is it South Carolina, North Carolina? You guys, I'm terrible. Like when I travel, I don't know. <laughs> It's so funny because, um, I just, <laughs> so I think it's South Carolina. So like, <laughs> I don't remember the time before or the last time I was traveling, like I went to the airport and there was like one of those stations outside the airport, like on the curb where you can like check your bag. And so I took my bag up there and the guy's like, where are you going? And I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> So I had to like open my phone and be like, oh, I'm going to, I don't know where it's going. <laughs> but I was just like, I can't, like, I can't. Um, so yeah, that's it. Last sport you played. Uh, I would say swim, swimming. I love swimming, both my kids swim. Who's the last person you talked to? Uh, Adam on FaceTime. Last song you sang. Oh, I know that. I was listening to, to Pink Floyd and the Beatles on the way to the airport this morning and I listened to Hey Jude by the Beatles and I was belting it out shamelessly. Favorite pickup line? I don't have one of those. Do you have a crush? No. The relationship between you and the person you last texted. All right, let's see who's the person I last texted. Uh, Kira, she is my daughter. She said, do you want me to FaceTime you when Connor is performing? And I said, yes. Favorite food. Oh, this is a hard one. See, this is a hard one. Favorite food, favorite song. I can never just pick one. I would say favorite food. Uh, I love pizza. <laughs> I can't eat a lot of it, but I love it. I also love salads and I love a good like steak and baked potato dinner. I know that's. That's a terrible answer, but that's what I like. Place you want to visit. Uh, so Adam and I really want to go on an Alaskan cruise next year. We want to plan for it. I need to research and find out how much it's going to cost. Um, I also really want to go to either the UK or Ireland. I think that would be a fun trip for Adam and I. Um, so if you live there, let me know. Tips on that. <laughs> but that's something I really want to do. 
When, what's the last time you kissed someone? Uh, I kissed Adam this morning when I left at like 3.30 in the morning, even though he was still sleeping. Last time you were insulted. Oh, today. I mean, I feel like with YouTube comments, like I'm insulted on a daily basis and I've just gotten to the point now where if it's really insulting, I just delete it. Like, um, if the person is just being critical, I do sometimes put a response to it. I don't know. I mean, the last time I was really insulted, I don't know. I can't remember. I mean, daily online on YouTube comments, if that's what you, um, consider me <laughs> being insulted. Favorite flavor of sweets. Oh, I'm not a big sweets person, but if I had to pick something, I would pick cheesecake. What instruments do you play? None. I did not play any instruments in school. I was only in choir, show choir, and color guard, which is flags, if you're not familiar with that. Favorite piece of jewelry? Um, I would say two, I have two. So I have my wedding ring. Um, actually, Adam bought this. I don't know if you can see it. Um, he bought this from Zales. Actually, I think they went out of business now on my suggestion. Um, we actually went there together and I was like, this is the ring I want. And by the way, when we bought it, we were both very young and it was very out of our price range and we financed it and we both helped pay it off. <laughs> so Adam and I both paid for my wedding ring. And I'm totally fine with that. We were not, uh, we were not in the same financial spot then as we are now. So I also really like these like blue sea glass earrings he got me for my uh, birthday last year. I think I've talked about those before, but they're super pretty. I don't know. Like he doesn't, he's not that he's not the type of husband that just like buys a lot of jewelry all the time. So basically anything he buys me, I love and I'm super appreciative of. He actually bought me a bracelet from Zales like a long, long time ago and I lost it on a work trip. I'm so pissed at myself for that to this day. Like I didn't even like lose it intentionally. It just like fell off somewhere along the way and I don't have it anymore. All right, sorry, Kira, <laughs> Kira called me on the way back from the concert. What was the question I was on? Favorite piece of jewelry, I already said that. Have you ever used it? Yeah, I wear my wedding ring every day. Actually, I never take my ring off ever. Um, I know some people like take their ring off when they shower and stuff. I honestly, I never take it off cause I'm just scared of losing it and I just never take it off. Last time you hung out with anyone, I don't know. I would say I hung out with Adam last night watching TV before we went to bed. <laughs> Exciting. Uh, who should answer these questions next? Tag them. Um, okay, so I'm gonna think about that and I am going to tag three YouTubers in the comments to answer this TMI tag. Uh, so if you do end up answering them and you're tagged, let me know. Even if you're not tagged and you're a YouTuber and you wanna answer these questions, let me know. So anyway, it is now uh, 8.30 and I'm going to wrap it up for this day of Vlogmas. I'm sure it's a very long video, but uh, say la vie such as life. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I will have a playlist linked down in the comments, not in the comments, in the description box below for my 2019 Vlogmas playlist. And come back tomorrow for another day in the life vlog for December 2019. I appreciate all your support. I appreciate all your kind comments. Um, I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Lovely thoughts we all heard before as they walk